So you know that feeling that what someone says to you, yes, let's do it. And you're like, yay, I got a client. But what happens after that? The real game begins after they sign up. And that's when you either turn them into a raving fans or you lose them to the dreaded client ghost. Today, we're diving into how to get them hooked, excited and so happy that they will never think of leaving. Hey, I'm Veronica De Polo, and with more than 15 years being a marketing strategist, are you ready for actionable bite sized episodes about business advice on marketing, branding, and messaging to take your business to the next level? If you're a service business owner, we'll show you how to attract qualified leads on social media and beyond. We'll reveal the art of showcasing your brand effectively and will uncover the best strategies to hook your audience so they keep coming for more. Say goodbye to outdated marketing strategies and embrace the power of change. Welcome to the Branding Momentum Podcast. So one of the things that we need to actually consider is that when you onboard a new client, it is like a first date. You know, instead of saying customer boarding, think of it as the first date. You wouldn't just sit around there quietly, right? No, you know, you want to impress, you know, and set expectations and make them feel that they're, you know, that they made the right choice. And that is crucial. And it's like sending them a super thoughtful text after a great first date. Sometimes you get those texts, sometimes you don't. But that's a story for another day. (laughs) You know, you make them feel like they're part of the family right now from the start. And you send them a welcome message, maybe even some fun and unexpected little personal video or a note. So they're already thinking, whoa, I picked the right person. So think of onboarding like the Netflix of, are you still watching? You want to keep them engaged, not wondering if they've been forgotten in the couch, you know, in the couch cushions of your business. No, you want to keep them as warm and cozy as you can do that, right? So the second thing that I would say that you would need to do is to keep the conversation flowing and don't ghost them. So you in the past, the first date, right? So you're past that first date, that is done. Now you're gonna keep the convo going. You're gonna keep the conversation going. If you ever been ghosted after a first date, then you know the worst, right? Don't let that happen to your clients. You've got to check in. You got to keep them updated. Most importantly, show them that you actually do care and that you have time for them. You know, there's a secret here. Clients believe that we're their only clients and it is our job to tell them, yes, you are. I have other ones, but don't ghost them. I mean, I personally love when people communicate because I think communication is the key of everything. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to keep them in the loop and like a quick email, a friendly message, just to ask how things are going. It's really not rock and science, you know, but it works. It works wonders if you actually keep that going when you are in the process of onboarding and warming that client as they come in. And regular communication is like, you know, texting a client's meme midweek to keep them, you know, things light or something. You can, you know, you can send them something like, I am here. I'm for you. If they don't hear from you, they're probably thinking that you've already moved on to the next shiny object. So what this does is that that takes all the objections from them towards you. So you are removing those problems in their head. Now, the third thing that I would say is that you got to deliver like a rock star. And, and I'm telling you this, and I am pretty sure that you deliver your clients like a rock star, 
But if you feel that you made some promises that maybe you are not doing something, let's talk about it. Okay. So you've promised something awesome to them. Now, when you deliver it, this is the time to deliver it. This is exactly where you're going to show them that you're not all talk and blah, blah, blah. Keep things smooth. Follow through on your promises. If you said something, follow it through. Make sure they see the results and you show them the results. When clients feel they being taken care of, they most likely are going to stick around for the long haul. So make sure that the work is top notch, whether it is a service or a product, or this is how you wow them. This is exactly how you wow them. And they actually work for you without them even knowing that they're working for you because they're going to tell everybody that you are amazing. Make them think that this was even better than what they thought at the beginning. So you got to surprise them. You got to show them that you are the right choice. And, you know, delivery like uh, Amazon Prime, they do it fast. They do it reliable. And with that thing that, you know, like, how do they actually do it so perfectly? Energy. No one ever complained about getting what they asked for and getting it well done. Nobody. Now, the fourth thing that I would say that we need to do is to keep adding a little bit of surprise, the cherry on the top. Okay. So here's where you're going to stand out, like really, really stand out. Give them a little extra, not in a cheesy kind of way, but in a way that says, Hey, I'm still thinking about you. And I want to make sure that you're getting even more than you've expected. And it could be an extra tip. It could be an extra resource that they didn't even expect or they didn't ask for it. Maybe you took them out for lunch. You took them for a drink, something, something that is quick for them to realize that you're saying like a little quick shout out to something great that they've done. And you gotta make them feel special. This is like when your favorite coffee shop, you know, gives you a, a free cookie just for that, you know, just for being awesome because, you know, that you already got to know the person behind the desk and, and they're giving you that little cookie. Don't you feel so special when they give that to you? It's like, who doesn't want any bonus cookies, right? So try to do similar little things for your clients. Now, the fifth thing that is quite important is don't be afraid to ask for feedback after you've done all the things. Now it is time to actually to ask how you did. This is not an exam. Don't be afraid to ask for feedback. If it's negative, it's fine. Keep it. Keep it to you. Don't punish yourself because I know a lot of people that actually do punish themselves and they are afraid to ask for feedback. So as you're asking how did you do? And it's not going to be in a clingy kind of way. Please like me. Please like me. No, no, no. But more like, how did we actually do? How can we make it even better next time? Next time that maybe you hire me because maybe this is a one-time thing. This is not a long term contract or hiring of a service, right? How can you make that person know that you want to keep working with them? And this is what actually makes them feel heard. And I'm going to repeat this again, because not many people sometimes listen when somebody talks. We got to ask. The more we ask, the more they feel that you actually do value and that you care and that they feel like, oh, if this person is asking me so much for feedback, that means that I actually may want to work with them in the future again. Give them a good excuse. Just ask. It's simple, but it's very powerful and not many people actually do it. And their feedback not only helps you to improve, but also it makes them feel like they're part of your business journey. It is the same thing as like asking your best friend, how did it go after hosting a party? If they said it was great, 
but you know, the playlist, you know, wasn't that good or the food wasn't that great. You know, now, you know, for the next time. Now, the sixth thing that I want you to consider here is that follow ups and keep the love alive. Remember when I first said that this was dating? Yeah, we're still here. <laughs> Just because the service is over doesn't mean the relationship is. So keep in touch with them because yeah, you may find out a, a guy that you like or a person that you saw, whatever, but maybe things don't work out. It doesn't mean, or maybe you stop working. I mean, anything. It doesn't mean that you cannot have a good relationship after that. So keep in touch with them, invite them to new things and, you know, communicate, send them an email, get them on your list, make them feel like they're still part of your business family. And now that follow-up is really the key to get that loyalty that you end up want to have because these people, once they are within your world, they can become your best promotion, your best uh, word of mouth, your best lead. They can be ambassadors of your brand and of your business. So it is very important to don't let them feel like they were just a project, you know, keep them engaged and keep them the door open for future opportunities. And think of us as follow-ups as the sequel that is even better than the original. Hmm. You know, it's hard sometimes to get a sequel that is better than the original, right? So it is like they've just finished, you know, season one, and now they can't wait to get to the next because they don't know what's going to happen because it's what's so good. So you got to top it off, right? So mapping out the client journey doesn't have to be complicated. It's just about keeping the experience as seamless, as thoughtful as possible from the onboarding and all the way to long-term loyalty. And the goal is really make them feel like they found their business soulmate. That is what you actually want. And they won't want to look anywhere else because you are delivering everything as you told them that you would. So I leave you with this one and I'll see you same time, same place next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>